the role of Downing Street and Westminster in this whole process. Nigel Dodd said on this programme about an hour ago uh, that she had great confidence in the efforts that have been made by Liz Truss, uh, both as Foreign Secretary and briefly as Prime Minister, to do the right thing by the people of Northern Ireland. He said as far as Rishi Sunak's concerned, well, that all remains to be seen. Yes, and I think this is the problem for unionism. Can they trust any British Prime Minister? Reality, no. Arlie knows that. They've gone down this road hundreds of times with British Prime Ministers, right back even to Margaret Thatcher, behind the backs of unionism. Margaret Thatcher was in treating with Republicans. That's the history. Patrick Mayhew picked up the, the, the cudgels, and he in treated with Republicans. Peter Brook did the same. Secretary of State after Secretary of State, Prime Minister after Prime Minister, including John Major. They were up to their oxers in secret negotiations with Republicans. And that's, I, 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 I must say, I, I can understand the, the anger and the angst of unionism because they are clinging, clinging uh, to British Prime Ministers who habitually go behind their backs and cheat on them. That's the reality of life. Isn't the reality of life as well, Eamon, something that Arlene conceded in, in the first part of, of my conversation with her, and that is the reality of Brexit for the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland as part of the United Kingdom uh, is such uh, that it is in many respects intractable unless somebody goes absolutely to the wall, whether it's a breach of an international law, whether it's a tearing up of a, a, a treaty. Such is the nature of this challenge for any prime minister, any secretary of state, that it really is in the intractable, too difficult to solve box. No, we will get a solution to this. We were in more difficult circumstances running up to the Good Friday Agreement. And the Good Friday Agreement happened because the two Prime Ministers, the Prime Minister of the Irish Republic and the British Prime Minister of the day, Tony Blair, they put their, wheel, their shoulders to the wheel and it happened. This problem is capable of resolution. But I think there's, a, there's an imbalance in the argument being, being promoted where throughout the United Kingdom by unionism. The reality is the farming community in Northern Ireland are doing very well out of the protocol. Manufacturing is doing extremely well. So there's this notion that uh, the country here is falling apart because of this protocol. Not true. Not true at all. There are many, many positives being enjoyed by a lot of people in business in Northern Ireland. I accept that at the heart of the union's concern is that what nationalists originally saw as the imbalance from, from their perspective in Northern Ireland, as Catholics, as nationalists, they called it then a, a lack of parity of esteem. Essentially, unionism believes that a border down the Irish Sea is undermining their parity of esteem with the rest of the United Kingdom. Uh, they believe that because of that border, they are being treated differently to any other part of the United Kingdom. And there is, there is p potentially a bona fide attaching to that particular argument. So, but it's wrong to think that Northern Ireland, that the economy is crumbling here because of the protocol. Not true. Farmers, I heard a, a, a farmer of unionist extraction who, I can only conclude, he, he went to almost 400,000 cow, 400 cows day and night and morning. And he said, he, he said, if, if it should come to pass that the protocol is set aside, we're in real, real trouble, he said, as dairy farmers, because my milk is picked up by a company which brings it across the border, it's sure. processed there. And yeah. he said, the reality is, we haven't got the steel here. We haven't got the capacity to process that milk. And he said, Amen. the dairy farmer will die.